lovelies welcome back to my channel and welcome back to myself to my channel <laughs> today we're gonna dive right into your menstrual cycle and all of the lovely little hormones that make it possible So when I talk about your menstrual cycle, there's actually two separate cycles going on that work in tandem together that make up your menstrual cycle as we know it as a whole. There's the ovarian cycle, which is the cycle of an egg maturing and then being released at ovulation. And then there's the uterine cycle, which is the cycle of the lining of your uterus thickening and then shedding when you get your period. An average cycle would be 28 days. But a normal cycle can be anywhere from 20 days to 35 days. Personally, mine have always been longer. I've never had a textbook 28 day cycle. But for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of like anything you read about the menstrual cycle and the timeline of it, they're always going to use the textbook 28 day cycle or four week cycle. Day one of your menstrual cycle starts when you start your period. So the first day you have bleeding will be the first day of your cycle. Ovulation happens roughly in the middle of your cycle. If you have a 28 day cycle, it'll happen exactly in the middle of your cycle on day 14. However, this just like cycle lengths can vary woman to woman. My ovulation cycle has always been a little bit longer because I have longer cycles in general. And someone could have a shorter cycle where they ovulate before day 14. But roughly in the middle of your cycle, you'll ovulate. There are two major phases that we're gonna discuss as far as our menstrual cycle is concerned. An ovulation day, no matter what day that is for you, is gonna mark the middle and the separation of those two phases. The first half of your cycle will be the follicular phase. And the follicular phase is all about the follicle or the egg. This first phase, the follicular phase, will vary depending on how long or short your cycle is. The second phase doesn't and shouldn't really vary in length. In a 28 day cycle, the follicular phase would be weeks one and two. The follicular phase ends when you ovulate. So ovulation is kind of like the cutoff point of the follicular phase and the start of the next phase, which is the luteal phase. And the luteal phase is named such because once the follicle ruptures and releases the egg, what's left behind is called the corpus luteum. So hence the luteal phase. And this is kind of like the driving force behind the second part of your menstrual cycle. So if you have a 28 day cycle, after you ovulate, this will be weeks three and four. This will be your luteal phase. And this phase should be 14 days long. Okay, let's meet the hormones. I was trying to figure out a good way to streamline this and make it as simple as possible because there is a ton of overlap between all these hormones. It's not just like hormone A and hormone B and hormone C and they all just like take these nice little turns. Your body is so complex and there's just this ebb and flow between all these hormones to make everything happen the way it's supposed to happen. So I'm going to introduce each hormone and give you a brief summary of what they do and then we'll go through the cycle from day one and I'll show you a little bit more of the timeline of when these hormones get to shine and play their part. The first hormone I want to introduce to you would be follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and it really kind of kicks off your menstrual cycle because this hormone comes from your pituitary gland in your brain and it signals your body to start maturing an egg. Then we have the luteinizing hormone or LH for short. Luteinizing hormone surges right before ovulation and that triggers your body to release that egg and cause ovulation. So if you're familiar with the OPKs or the ovulation predictor kits, they're testing for that LH surge right before ovulation. They're looking for this hormone. Then we have two hormones that you probably are familiar with hearing, and that's estrogen and progesterone. These two are kind of like frenemies. They work together, but they're also very antagonistic in a lot of ways. They balance each other out. Estrogen, which is one of your female sex hormones, is a growing hormone. This hormone primarily will signal to your uterus to start building up its lining and thickening it and maturing it. Remember that you shed your lining during your period, so then it gets very thin. Estrogen will become very dominant in the first half of your cycle during the follicular phase to help regrow and re-thicken that uterine lining. After ovulation, progesterone kind of takes the reins and estrogen backs off a little bit, and progesterone we can think of as a balancing hormone or a relaxing hormone. You might think of it as a 
pregnancy hormone and that's because it maintains the uterine lining and kind of stops estrogen from continuing to let it grow. So progesterone during your luteal phase will be produced by the corpus lutei and that will maintain the uterine lining for pregnancy, for implantation. If implantation doesn't happen, after 14 days the corpus luteum will die, progesterone will stop being produced, and the drop in progesterone is what signals your period or the shedding of your uterine lining, and we start the cycle all over again. All right, so let's start at day one of your cycle with FSH, which is the yellow line at the bottom. FSH will signal to your body to start selecting an egg and maturing it and getting it ready to be released at ovulation. During the first half of your phase, the follicular phase, so from day one through ovulation, you can see that the orange line or estrogen is pretty dominant and really rises above everything else. You'll see that there's a big surge in estrogen and this surge in estrogen is what will trigger an LH surge or the luteinizing hormone. And the luteinizing hormone is what will trigger the release of the egg. Once the follicle ruptures and the egg's released, we have what's left behind is the corpus luteum, which will begin producing progesterone. And you see in the second half of the cycle from ovulation through the end, you'll see progesterone kind of takes over and becomes the lead player in your menstrual cycle. And that's the bluish purpley line. During the second half of your cycle for 14 days, the corpus luteum will continue producing progesterone. This will make sure that your uterine lining stays maintained. It doesn't keep growing. It doesn't shed. If you have a successful pregnancy, the corpus luteum will continue to produce progesterone until the placenta takes over producing that hormone. If no implantation occurs and there's no pregnancy, then progesterone will drop off as the corpus luteum dies. That will signal the start of your next cycle when your uterine lining sheds and you start your period. I hope that made sense to you. <laughs> this video is so foundational to all the videos to come because if you don't truly understand what's going on in your menstrual cycle and you don't necessarily need to understand all the really nitty-gritty details you just need to know what's happening in your body <laughs> i hope this was an enlightening video to you if you had no idea what caused your period and what happens during those days and weeks in between your period now hopefully you have a better understanding of what's going on in your body and how absolutely amazing you are and how incredible your body is. Also, let me just mention really quick, shameless plug, the YouTube algorithm is quite an interesting thing and it really relies on you to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel in order for the algorithm to know I'm here and let other people know I'm here so that this video can be of help to some other people. So if you found this video interesting, or educational or helpful in any way whatsoever, please just hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for all my future videos so that you'll get an alert. Be sure to leave a comment down below or drop a smiley face emoji to let me know that you're here today. I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you in my next video.